Today I'm going to be speaking to you about atomic structure, and this tutorial is based on the 2015 AQA AS level specification. So let's talk about the basics. Every atom has a nucleus which contains protons and neutrons. Both of these particles are known as nucleons. Orbiting the nucleus are electrons. One of the definitions you're going to have to know is the proton number, or the atomic number, and this is the amount of protons in the nucleus. In a neutral atom, this equals the amount of electrons, so it can tell you about chemical properties and such. The nucleon number, also the mass number, is the amount of protons and neutrons, aka the amount of <laughs> nucleons inside the atom. And it's just sort of a brief visual sort of representation of what I'm talking about. Uh, in this uh, carbon-12 atom, the proton number is specified at the bottom left, and the mass number is specified on the top left. Uh, to basically, essentially to the left of the symbol of the atom, or the element. Next thing is isotopes. These are atoms with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. So same proton number, different nucleon number. Here's an example. Hydrogen has three natural isotopes. You can find hydrogen with one proton and zero neutrons. This is known as hydrogen. Or one proton and one neutron. This is known as deuterium. Um, I'm going to be butchering pronunciations all over the place. Or with one proton and two neutrons. Tr tritium, this is called, I think. <laughs> um, the chemical properties aren't changed if you change the amount of neutrons. Uh, chemical properties are associated with the amount of electrons. The only thing that is changed is the stability of the nucleus. Once you start crapping around with the amount of neutrons, it's stability that's affected. Unstable nuclei is dodgy territory, as they can be radioactive and decay over time into different nuclei that is more stable. Radioactive isotopes are kind of useful though, it's how we're able to date things. You see, all living matter contains the same proportion of the radioactive carbon-14 taken in from the atmosphere, the normal one being carbon-12. Me and my friend here both have roughly the same amount of carbon-14 taken in from the atmosphere, and although we look 200 times more stupid than this swan, this swan also, believe it or not, has roughly the same amount of carbon-14 taken in from the atmosphere. Now, when we cease to exist, so when me and my friend die, the amount of carbon-14 inside of us decreases over time as it is decaying. Using the isotopic data to find the percentage of radioactive carbon-14 that's left inside of us, scientists can calculate the approximate age of our dead corpses. Last thing I'm going to talk to you about is specific charge. This is the ratio of a particle's charge to its mass, which is measured in coulombs per kilogram. So essentially, as you may be able to guess, to calculate specific charge, you just divide the charge by the mass. Amazing. So, here's just a little example. Uh, a question you might be asked is, the specific charge of a carbon-12 nucleus. Okay? So, let's work out the mass. The mass is basically 12 nucleons. So, and the mass of a proton and neutron is the same, and that is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 27. That value will be given to you in the data sheet, so you don't have to memorize that, don't worry. So it's 12 nucleons, so 12 times 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 equals 20.04 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. That 1.6 times 10 to the 20 minus 27 is in kilograms. Next, let's calculate the charge. Now, because this is just the nucleus, we don't take into account the electrons, okay? So there are six protons in the nucleus, so that's six times the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Uh, that value will also be given to you in the data sheet. Uh, the value, the charge of an electron is obviously the same thing, but minus, um, and that equals 9.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Coulombs. Um, now to calculate a specific charge, we just divide the charge by the mass which gives us the resulting 4.79 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. Remember, uh, units are important. And the second thing that's important is significant figures. Um, the lowest amount of significant figures given to us in this question were 3. Uh, that's given from the 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 and the 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 values. Those figures are to three significant figures, and there's no really other value that we can take into account, so we'll use three significant figures as our sort of base, uh, so we will leave our answers, uh, leave our answer in three significant figures. That is it for today's video on atomic structure, hopefully you guys learned quite a bit today, uh, if, if you did then please leave a like, comment, and of course go ahead and subscribe for future videos. 
Have a fantastically brilliant day, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.